evening. I'm Evelyn Darling, the Director of Community Development at Viet Aid. And thank you for tuning in to VA TV tonight. Tonight is Wednesday, October 22nd, 2014. VA TV is the voice of Vietnamese Americans in the greater Boston area. VA TV is sponsored by the Vietnamese American Initiative for Development, also known as Viet Aid. VA TV is on live every Wednesday night from 7 to 8 p.m. on BNN TV Network which is on Comcast Channel 9 or RCN Channel 15. We're also online at www.bnntv.org. This evening's program will also be shown several times throughout the week on the following days, on Sunday at 5 o'clock, Monday at 1 p.m., and Tuesday at 11 a.m. Tonight, um, tonight's show is a call-in show, a live call-in show. So if you are calling in on Wednesday night and you want to give us a comment or um, a question for our guests, you can call in and talk to us at 617-708-3290. That's 617-708-3290. If you have any comments that you'd like to give us off the air, you can email us at VATV at VATAID.org or call us at 617-822-3717. And this is the second half of VA TV tonight, which is our English portion. My guests tonight are Karen Goodfellow, who's the director of the Boston Art Commission, and Nam Pham, the executive director at VA Aid. Thank you both for braving the weather tonight. Thank you, Evelyn. And coming out. Um, so tonight, we're going to be talking about VA Aid's um, public art project for Fields Corner, the Freedom Public Art Project. And so I want to start with you, Karen, and ask you, what is public art? Like, a lot of people don't really <laughs> seem to know sure. what we mean by public art. Well, when I think of public art, I think about art in public places. So I just think about it very simply as the sort of things you might see, whether on a wall or in a park or any art that's really happening in our public space. So can it be a painting or? Sure. It can be a painting as long as it's sort of something you might see as you're coming down the street or, um, you know, in a park, um, so it would have to be pretty durable to be out in the in the public space. But a painting okay. on a wall, sure, that would uh -huh. definitely be public art, and it could be something that helps to create uh, community spaces. It might be something that aids in community dialogue, or identity, or identifying community values or heroes, or bringing up questions that bring up sort of our the things that we share, and also the things that make us unique. Mm -hmm. And your role at the Boston Arts Commission with respect to public art. So I'm the director of the Boston Art Commission. The Art Commission itself, we have a wonderful board that we work with of community arts leaders. Um, but I'm the director, so I run the day-to-day -day sort of ongoings of the, the Art Commission. And you're supporting public art in the city of Boston? Sure. We have care and custody of all art on city property. So we oversee, for example, the art in Faneuil Hall, so a lot of those historic paintings um, that you don't see in the same way you would see it, maybe a public artwork, but are definitely publicly accessible. Um, and then all the artwork in the in the streets and in the parks and, and all around the city. And we're hoping more and more to get more public art. And it's through uh, organizations mm -hmm. like Viet Aid and uh, people like, like Nam who are helping us to do that and to get more art in our communities. Mm -hmm. So Nam, yeah. Viet Aid, and you, sure. you have an idea yeah. about public art uh, for Fields Corner. Why don't you tell us like what your idea was or what your vision was? Uh, first, uh, I'm very excited uh, to share with uh, out of you about uh, VIT-8 uh, public art project. Uh, but let me uh, say that we are very grateful for the support from Karen and the Art Commission and the city and the Proven, which has been uh, a key supporter for this project. Mm -hmm. And uh, I listened to uh, Karen talk about uh, her belief in public art from the Art Commission uh, that's one uh, I got saying that pop in my mind, great mice thing I like, <laughs> even though my mind is not that great. Uh, but uh, basically, it, uh, I it, uh, believe that uh, art uh, not only adds meanings to life, but also brings people together uh, and help us to heal, especially mm -hmm. for people who had to struggle a lot to come to America or to look for freedom and for freedom. Uh, and that's, uh, that's how the idea came to be eight, three years ago, that we should have uh, a piece of public art uh, to remind all of us why we're here, 
uh, how we get here, and where we wanted to go. Uh, and on top of that, uh, I tra have traveled to many different places, a few places, and in any interesting place mm -hmm. that we like to come back, there are public art. Mm -hmm. But in Dorchester and Phil Corner, we have not had many. Uh, and the, one of the goals of Viet Aid is to help to transform Phil Corner into a destination for business and culture. To do that, we need to have art. That's why we are very grateful for your support uh, and our community support for this project. Uh -huh. And so you, you picked a site, though, you, you, not just anywhere in Fields Corner, I assume. Uh, yes, uh, again, with the support uh, of uh, various people uh, from the city, especially from Karen, uh, we have found a perfect place uh, at uh, Taofu Park. Uh, it's the most prominent, the most widely used public space for people in, uh, in Phil Corner uh, because a goal, uh, one of the goals of our uh, project is to bring people together to start a conversation uh, uh, to let people talk about their experience. Mm -hmm. So what is better place than a public place uh, at a park? Mm -hmm. uh, so Tao Phil Park right at the corner of Dorchester Ave and Park Street will be the site uh, for, uh, for this wonderful Freedom Project. So I think we actually have um, some pictures of Townfield Park, maybe. Oh, yep, we do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's on the screen now. We're looking at, uh, we were looking at Townfield Park. Um, you describe a little bit more about the, the space right where you want to place the art. Uh, the space that we have is basically right in front of the, the building that we have. Uh, that has been the house of uh, Dorchester Sport League. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's right next to a playground for children. Uh, and behind the spot is baseball field. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so uh, it, it's a gathering place. It's just like the heart of that, uh, of that park. Mm -hmm. And if you drive uh, along Dorchester uh, just right past that, you cannot miss it. Uh, so uh, one of our goals is to bring people from different generations uh, different age, uh, and so we have children playing on that playground, uh, older, younger people, uh, younger than I, older people play baseball, uh, and uh, people walking by, having a cup of coffee from Dunkin' Donut over to a store over there. So uh, we feel very fortunate uh, that uh, we, uh, the city basically gave us the permission to look at that, uh, that spot and mm -hmm. uh, design the art project uh, to fit into that uh, environment. Mm -hmm. So Karen, yeah. Nam comes to you with this sure. exciting idea, right. talking about Townfield Park, mm -hmm. and you agree. Um, what, if you can like, kind of briefly summarize, like what are the steps, you know, like for V8 or for any organization or anyone, sure. like what if they have an idea um, to bring more art in the city, what, sure. what happens? It depends on what kind of art we're talking about. So right now we're talking about a community-driven permanent piece, right? Mm -hmm. So um, the first step there is to think about the site. And in this case, we're talking about Town Field. It's a city park. So having you know the Parks Department involved is obviously a necessity. Um, and they're fantastic and very supportive. And um, Commissioner Cook and um, both um, the, the rest of the staff there as well are extremely supportive of the arts. Um, Liza Meyer, who's there, uh, the chief uh, landscape architect there, has been very helpful in looking at the site. And we had lots of site visits and spent a lot of time looking at, you know, what what are the needs of this place. So I think that is really the first step. So really, for anyone proposing a public artwork, uh, approaching the city and talking to me first is helpful. And then we identify, you know, whose property is this? And what are the needs of this space? Is there anything else going on there? In the case of Town Field, there's a lot else going on there, um, which is a wonderful thing, but can also present some challenges. Um, so we, we start there, and then we think about how do we fund this project? And so I, you know, that's obviously a very important step, and it's both the city and the proponent and the community who are involved in that. And then we might think about bringing on a consultant. In this case, Jean Minio has stepped in and, and done a wonderful job with us. And, helped prepare a request for qualifications, 
Artists, as you can see, there are, there are a lot of yes, steps lot to this. Steps. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, um, I'm not closing This over. is your answer. Like, <laughs> this is your real answer. Uh, yeah. A request for qualification so artists understand what the community is looking for, um, and which is a very important so that's, process. So that's like you're putting out um, kind of an announcement right. to the artist community, like we have this opportunity, right. please. Um, it's, it's like a job listing. Like, right, so it's like a job listing, but very exactly. Send okay. your portfolio. Show yep. us what you've done. Um, okay. Are you a good fit for this project? Uh -huh. Is this project a good fit for you? Um, and we receive, you know, many, uh, many. We receive 144 uh, proposals mm -hmm. or uh, qualification uh, from artists from literally from 29 states mm -hmm. in nine different countries. Wow, that's really that's really exciting, actually. That yeah. Fields Corners project got so much attention from the arts community. Yeah. And also our three finalists are very prominent in their field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a Spanish artist who mm -hmm. is, I just learned that he's one of the most well-known person in that field uh, mm -hmm. uh, from Spain and coming here mm -hmm. and to do something uh, for Phil Connor. Mm -hmm. And we have a Vietnamese artist mm -hmm. uh, and we have another artist from Arizona and he's also very prominent. So yeah. We are very, very excited. That's exciting. So, okay, why don't we go through um, each artist one by one? Um, I think we're going to start with Antran. Okay. Um, if you can talk a little bit about his proposal, um, and I think we have a picture of him and his um, his artwork, his proposal. Hopefully, we can pull it up and the audience can see. Yep, they're going yeah. <laughs> to Freedom Temple. Yeah. 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 His yeah. Uh, his artwork. If, if I may say something, uh, uh, his uh, the title of his uh, proposal. Uh, piece, a piece of culture made of marble, white marble. Mm -hmm. We call it uh, Freedom Temple. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's uh, uh, about 10 feet high to one piece of marble. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's shaped in different shape, but it, uh, you can, depending on which angle you look at, it might look like the two hands uh, by together, mm -hmm. uh, a symbol of unity working together, or uh, a thought with the light in the, uh, underneath shine up the sky, hope and freedom. Mm. Uh, and also you can walk through that piece of sculpture. Uh, uh, it signifies also transparency uh, and openness. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's made of white marble, so it may last forever. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's exciting. Yeah. Um, and then the next artist actually proposed two sculptures. Sure, Joe O'Connell, yeah. Uh, so so he proposed a piece called Freedom's Herald and another piece called Freedom's Nature. Um, so I don't know if we have images of both of those up. Yep. Um, um, we have uh, so I think Freedom's that's nature, Freedom's think, Nature yeah. right there. So he's done a lot of interesting work really with pieces with light coming out of them and then they are projecting shadow. So his was very interesting also because it took into account the building right next door to the site, uh, the Outdoor Chester Sports League building. Um, so that the shadows from this piece would be cast onto the wall, which was, I, I think, he took something that might have been a challenge and turned it into an opportunity, mm -hmm. uh, which is which was really exciting. Mm -hmm. And then his second piece, Freedom's Herald, I think that's what it's called, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. That one used text, so Freedom's Nature had used the the form of birds. Uh -huh. um, this one also used, uh, you know, forms that at night would cast a shadow, but this one was using text in many different languages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, in both of his pieces, it's about 20 feet high, and you still can walk through. Uh, uh -huh. And I found this was one of the common themes, it's amazing, three artists from three different continents, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. And they all somehow have a commonality that it had to be open. You can walk through it, you can touch right. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And our third, the third finalist. Is out uh, Spanish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Juan famous Juan yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and his piece was Freedom Home, um, and it was interesting also that they all used freedom in the title. Yeah. Obviously, this was I think a theme that really touched people, and I think that's why we got so many submissions. Uh, so it is interesting that they all created pieces that allowed uh, people to to interact directly, to walk through, um, to really be in be in the artwork. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and he told us that the inspiration for his design was basically came from the. A limestone for, uh, I guess, formulation for mm -hmm. uh, of Halong Bay from North Vietnam. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, he made it, and he uh, used the word freedom in almost all languages mm -hmm. to build the uh, his design. Yeah. 
Right. Uh, and on Swiss design also has a door. Mm -hmm. So you, again, you can walk through. Right. Uh, so it's just, just amazing uh, that uh, all three artists, for me, mm -hmm. uh, has captured a very abstract concept. We mm -hmm. talked about it uh, six months ago. It's about freedom, but it's not just honor people, what people done in the past, but also project forward to the future. Right. Uh, and it's just, I, I am basically just so thrilled and so happy that all of the three people that could come up with a wonderful design, I would be happy with any of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think it is really exciting, and it's exciting to see that some of the most promising pieces we have coming up in the city are happening in our neighborhoods, yeah. you know, where people will see them every day, mm -hmm. um, which is really heartwarming, I think. Yeah. So um, we're going to have to wrap up in a few minutes, but um, how can the public, how can the people watching get involved or participate in this? Uh, one thing that we always do at Vid8 is try to provide opportunity for everybody to participate. So the public can view the design uh, and have comment and input and help us to select Get the final piece over at uh, the Field Corner Public Library mm -hmm. from now until the end of October. Mm -hmm. uh, and after that, uh, the selection committee, we have very uh, prominent uh, people uh, who are members of our selection committee uh, to make the final uh, selection mm -hmm. uh, in the first week of November. Mm -hmm. Right. And if my understanding, um, Viet Aid, people can go to Viet Aid's website and also give feedback um, directly on our website. They can view the artist's proposals on our website, which is www.vietaid.org. So go there, um, take a look at the proposals. Um, each artist has submitted um, a bunch of pictures and text um, to go along explaining their proposals. Um, so please look at our website, um, take a look, and give us your feedback. So um, thank you both thank very you. much. Uh, it's really exciting project, mm. and um, and thank you for coming on. Um, so I just want to let you know, let the audience know that um, next week there's going to be a discussion about the election, the upcoming November election, and the entire show next week will be in Vietnamese. So um, we'll be back with the English portion in two weeks. If you have any questions about tonight's show, you can email us at VATV um, at VATV at VATA.org or you can call us at 617-822-3717. Thank you so much for watching and have a good night. Thank you.